It's your boy, Prime A Pimpin'. And I am Vanish. And this is Tabletop Champloo, where we talk about role-playing games. Today's video, character builds with Pathfinder 2E. Yeah, and we wanted something iconic, like an old-school blaster mage. Slinging fire, no frills, just face melting. You get it. Now, full casters can have some trouble in Pathfinder 2E because of poor action economy. Most spells, even cantrips, cost you two out of your three total actions to use. And nothing feels worse than wasting your whole turn doing nothing because your spell whiffed. And it's way easier to whiff because unlike weapons, there are no magic items that improve your bonus to hit. Beyond that, while you level up, your spell attack bonus pales in comparison to martial classes. Maybe they'll address some of these issues with the upcoming Secrets of Magic book, but until then, we will have to make do with what we got. Is this the end all be all of caster builds? Absolutely not. This is just our take. It's also not going to fix the problems we mentioned earlier. Really, we're just trying to leverage the strengths of the build. High burst damage for single target foes, and area damage for swarms of enemies. So enough preamble, let's build our blaster mage. We're going with Human Ancestry, taking the versatile heritage for toughness, giving us a bit more survivability. We'll use the first level stat increase to focus charisma for spellcasting, dexterity for higher AC, throwing the rest into con and wisdom for extra life and better saves. This will give us a resulting stat block of strength 10, dex 16, con 12, int 10, wisdom 12, and charisma 18. At level one, we take Adaptive Cantrip to improve versatility. It also gives us access to a particular spell we need later on. At level two, we take Bar Dedication with the Maestro Muse for some choice feats down the road. Ancestral Paragon comes next at level three because it gives us Natural Ambition, which allows us to take Dangerous Sorcery for more damage. At level four, we take Lingering Composition, but this feat choice doesn't come to fruition until the middle of stage two of our character's career, around level eight. Wrapping up stage one for our character, we take Adaptive Adept at level five, which gives us access to the spell True Strike. This is the whole reason we took Adaptive Cantrip, Human Ancestry, all of it. When spending your whole turn and several resources trying to blast down a single target, you don't want to miss, and True Strike doubles your chances. Basically, you glimpse into the future allowing you to roll twice to hit. Keeping the better result, the attack also ignore circumstance penalties and flat checks due to being concealed or hidden. Yeah, but you want to be careful because using an action to true strike and two actions to cast a spell means you can't move. Very true. You become a weapons platform, but we think it's worth it when trying to make that one big spell hit against high level single targets. Having the spell also lets you put it in scrolls for extra casts. So you just put your scrolls in the bandolier, pull them out, true strike, shoot them, pew pew, got them. And that wraps up stage one. We're taking some setup feats that help our accuracy issue with our big single target spells that need to hit at all costs. Now moving on to stage two, let's see that stack block. All right, so after taking your stat increases, prioritizing charisma and dex, of course, we want advanced bloodline at level six, giving us the bloodline focus spell, Elemental Motion. For one minute, we use our elemental trait of fire to give us a fly speed equal to our speed. This is obviously bonkers because we get so much extra mobility. We can protect ourselves from the crude melee enemies, all while being able to position ourselves on the battlefield in whatever ideal place we need for line of sight or casting area of effect spells. Don't forget that this comes with some downsides though. Just hovering in place takes an action which doesn't allow you to true strike and cast a spell unless you haste yourself giving you an extra action every turn. Yeah, but even without haste, having the option to fly above the fight and lob big spells down onto the unwitting masses just feels so cool and is totally worth it. Plus, if you have a safe spot to land, you can just park it and start your game plan. Level seven, we take fleet to improve our ground and newly found fly speeds. Level eight is when taking lingering composition at level four finally pays off. We take inspirational performance, giving us inspire courage as a cantrip, which pays back huge dividends. Not only does it buff your whole party's ability to hit, do damage, and saves versus fear, but the effect lasts long enough for you to true strike a big spell 
the following round with the same bonuses. But remember that the plus one status bonus to damage does not stack with the bonus that comes from dangerous sorcery due to it being the same type. Yeah, but it still comes up with spells that don't use dangerous sorcery, like cantrips and focus spells. True, true. Still, the bonus to hit is what's important here, as we, once again, are trying to maximize our chances to hit with big, blasty spells. At level 9, we take multi-talented, mostly due to lack of good choices, and Rogue seemed the best dedication to improve our hit chances, since surprise attack makes our enemies flat-footed if we go first. Closing out stage 2 of our character, we take overwhelming energy at level 10, to ignore some elemental resistances our enemies might have to combat our spell damage. So, in summation. This was a pretty important stage. I wouldn't consider this build to really be online until level 8, with Inspire Courage and Elemental Motion giving you plenty of options to choose from on your turn. Yeah, ultimately we get our bells and whistles this stage, where the setup from stage 1 really starts to shine. But now on to stage 3, so hit us with a stat block. Alright, so you know the deal by now, take Charisma and Dex as your main stat bumps. Moving on to level 11, we take Adopted Ancestry Halfling. This will give us access to the Halfling Fortune Feats, yet again improving our chances to hit with big spells. Next, we take Bloodline Focus at level 12. This is crucial since we use our focus spells a lot, and Bloodline Focus allows us to refocus two points instead of one. At level 13, we take Halfling Luck. Not a bad feat by itself, rerolling a failed skill check or saving throw is nothing to scoff at, but it's mostly a stepping stone to what we really want. Same thing for level 14, we take Primal Evolution, giving us some added spell slots for spells we generally don't cast, but it sets up nicely for the end game. So that concludes stage 3. Most set up but include some all-stars like bloodline focus to help our focus spell economy next it's time for the next stage so show me that stat block finally the end game second to last stat block highlights the usual buffs and charisma and decks and now it's time to get to the payoffs level 16 sees us get greater vital evolution the sequel of primal evolution and that effectively allows us to cast two extra spells at our highest and second highest spell levels every day. Quite powerful. Second payoff comes right after at level 17 when we take Guiding Luck, giving us two rerolls a day, one for skills and saves, the other for perception and attack rolls. Notably, this improves again our chances to hit with our big spells. At level 18, we take Echoing Spell. As an action, as long as your next spell is fourth level or lower, with no duration, the spell's energy reverberates and echoes, allowing you to cast the spell a second time before the end of your next turn without using a spell slot. This can be very strong since it effectively doubles your lower level spell output for an extra action per spell. And also for this feat, we have an exploit. Oh yeah? Yeah. If you didn't realize, you can use this meta magic feat to augment the spell you echoed. <laughs> Alright, moving on. The capstone on this character at level 20 will be Meta Magic Mastery. This character can be very action hungry with hovering in the air, casting True Strike, etc. So getting our Meta Magic actions for free, such as the aforementioned Echoing Spell, can be incredibly good. And of course, we end on our final stat block. And that's the build! So let's dive into some pros and cons. Here's the good part, you're playing a blaster mage. You get to blow dudes the hell up, and that's pretty cool. Flight mobility allows you to position intelligently, and your main role in the party, like most mages, is going to be crowd control. Hitting multiple targets with AoEs is your jam. Fortunately, we've optimized this build to help you take down some high level single target opponents as well, so you aren't just feeling useless when your party is facing down the big bad. Not to mention that they'll be grateful for inspiring courage in such times. The cons are definitely still there though. You were playing a caster class, you're really squishy. That's just the nature of the beast. If you get grappled or caught up in melee, you may have to get your party to bail you out because you might be stuck. And though we've been able to mitigate some, casters still lack good attack proficiency progression throughout leveling and they still have bad action economy. Here's a note on playing the build. Use your limited actions effectively. Plan what you are doing ahead of time and think critically about your choices. A bad action economy means your choices have to be as efficient as possible. 
And that's all we got. Let us know if you want more details on the build. Spell lists, skill feats, whatever you want. A lot of those are seasoned to taste, in my opinion. Make choices based on your backstory. Yeah, our goal here was to highlight what we felt were the most structurally important choices to the build. Everything else is for you to fill out. As always, if you like what you saw and you want more, remember to like and subscribe. We're a new channel and we could use your support. Notice me, senpai! Last thing is that we put resources for this build in the description. So if you're running this bad boy, leave us a comment about how it's going. If you have a question, leave us a comment. If you think that we're crooks, holler at us and let us know. Whatever you want. We'll catch you next time. Peace.